Welcome to Revealing Jesus. Are you hungry to learn more about our beautiful Savior Jesus? I am your host, Christina Pereira, lover of Jesus, apostolic leader, licensed and ordained minister, author, podcaster, and kingdom party planner. Did you know that the Bible declares that grace and peace are multiplied to us in the knowledge of Jesus? And that simply means the more we learn about our beautiful Savior, the more we will experience all He died to give us. Join me for all things the King and His Kingdom, including revelatory teaching, interviews with fivefold ministers, media leaders, authors, and more. Come discover the beauty of God displayed all across the body of Christ. Together, we are revealing more of Jesus to a hurting world today. This is a moment in time to take it one day at a time and to trust him for everything and only face the decisions you need to make in that day and let him care for the future and for the outcome. Because listen, Jesus knows the end from the beginning and what we will face. And he's already facing it for you. And he's in the present with you. And he has spoken to us about how to handle these kinds of times, these times of violence and crisis and shaking all over the world. He says, don't worry about tomorrow because your worry will add nothing to the circumstance, but its cost to you is terribly high. It costs you in your health, your emotional life, your relationships, your decision-making becomes, your capacity shrinks but before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to our Christina Prayer Ministry sponsors who help support the mission to unite the body of Christ and fulfill the Great Commission with love. A big shout out to Gopher Ministries who provides all of our equipment for our gospel events. Davis Financial Services who does all of our financial accounting. Harvest Family Network through which I am licensed and ordained and Life Changing Productions, who helps put together evangelistic events to reach our city for Jesus. If you or your organization are interested in becoming a CPM sponsor, you can find out more information on our website at ChristinaPereira.org. Do you have a loved one's special occasion coming up and don't know what to get them? Well, now you can sponsor an episode of Revealing Jesus in their name. And you can give them a special dedication message read on air. It makes a great gift. To find out more information, just go to christinapereira.org slash podcast. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of Revealing Jesus with Christina Pereira. I am your host, Christina, and I'm so excited to have you with me here today. I hope and I pray that you are doing well right where you are and enjoying the continuously flowing favor of grace pouring from our beautiful Savior and Father in heaven. I've got a great show for you today. I have the amazing Dr. Kim Moss with me back here today. She's been on this podcast so many times because I just love her. And uh, she is a fiery and yet so full of grace, passionate fivefold leader. She's the founder of Kim Moss Ministries and her new book, Finding Our Muchness, just came out this year. Please help me welcome Dr. Kim Moss. Hi, Christina. Thank you for having me. I just love being here. I just love you. So anytime I get to be with you, I just say yes. Oh, I love that so much. Well, I just love being here with you. And we were just praying and just waiting in the presence of the Lord before this started. And there was such peace and such joy and such refreshing in his presence. And it was just so amazing. And I know that what God has today for the people who are going to listen now and later is hopefully going to refresh them and encourage them. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share with our listeners a little bit about your story and how you met our beautiful Savior, Jesus? I can remember. This just comes to my mind. So I can remember when I was a little girl, probably about six, five, six, and going to this little white church, uh, it was a Baptist church at the time, and being in the 
and being in Sunday school. And I hadn't, you know, confessed the name of Jesus yet and confessed him as my Lord and Savior. But I remember always staring at the picture on the wall of Jesus. And, you know, I know it's not like a, a probably a realistic rendering of Jesus in that day in my generation, you know, was it was that picture that so many churches and so many families had in their house where he had this brownish blonde flowing hair, you know, and these blue eyes and his face was so serene. And I, I can remember at the youngest age, just staring at that picture and thinking, you are so beautiful, Jesus. You are so beautiful, Jesus. And I loved him even then, but it wasn't really until I was 13, you know, and I was, uh, you know, looking for boys and all of those kinds of things that 13 year old girls, you know, with their gang of girls. And, uh, and I got invited to a youth revival meeting and uh, went to a different church this time. And it was a really big church and they had some evangelists come and was speaking to the youth. And we were sitting, us girls, a group of probably five or six of us up in the back in the second balcony and way in the back because I didn't really come for the preaching. I came to see the boys. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but, but I tell you what, I'll tell you what, you know, Jesus knows exactly where we are. Yeah. He knows even when we are far from him and he is still pursuing us. You know, he, he's on the pursuit mm-hmm. for you, for those who are listening, for me, always. Yeah. Yeah. And he knows he knew my name, you know, and I'm sitting there not paying attention, really looking around, giggling, you know, very silly, a uh, 13 year old girl. And all of a sudden, I don't even know what was being spoken, but I, I felt this fire on my chest. I felt this burning inside of me. I became riveted, uh, with what was going on in the room. And I I didn't have words for it at the time. Like I couldn't have said at the time, I'm feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. You know, it was, now I know those things. We have words for those things Hmm. to have this Jesus. And in those days, you know, in the Baptist church that I grew up in, um, you had to make a public confession if you wanted Jesus as your savior, like you, you didn't get to just everybody close their eyes and say the words and nod yeah. your head. No, it was, you had to get out of your seat in front of everyone you were with mm-hmm. in front of the entire auditorium. And you had to go down to the front, kneel before God, kneel before all those people and publicly say, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my savior. So man, I started weeping. I, I couldn't even really wait until he was finished. And I got up from my seat in front of all my friends, in front of all the boys from school, you know, and I walked down to the front and I knelt and I, man, I was sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. I had to have him. I had to have him. And, um, and I got him that day. I got him that day. And, and, you know, I, what I didn't receive was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I received Jesus. And I knew, I absolutely knew that I was saved, you know, that I, that I, I belonged to him and he belonged to me. And even though from 13 until, oh, how old was I? 20? Mm, no, 34. Uh, when I was 34, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But And from 13 until probably uh, 25-ish, I walked away from Jesus. And I don't mean like I turned my back on him and I decided he wasn't my savior. I mean that I just wasn't following him. You know, I, I, I got caught up in experimenting with some drugs that was a little later on 
I got caught up in experimenting with boys. I, I got caught up doing my own thing and living by the flesh, I guess we would say, you know, mm -hmm. and I was of course in sin, you know, and I, but I knew it, you know, you know it, but you, but you do it anyway. There's something you just, and, and, uh, and I got married and then, uh, things went really bad in my marriage because mm -hmm. I married a man who was a drug addict and an alcoholic. And then um, mm -hmm. we almost divorced. And by divine intervention, we we got back together. We started going to church. Mm -hmm. But it was in 1994. It was March 22nd, 1994. I was at a women's retreat and I was giving my testimony of this miraculous thing. God did to save my marriage. I mean, he saved my life and he saved my marriage. You know, and the interesting thing is I don't usually talk about this part because I usually talk about hearing the audible voice and he saved my marriage. But, you know, I think the thing that wrecks me so much yeah. is that our beautiful Jesus who was pursuing me all of my from the moment I was staring at his picture, you know, and because that's him, you know, that's, that's him drawing you. That's all him. I, I, I cannot say that I was pursuing him. He was pursuing me. And, yeah. and even from 13, after I got saved, and then I didn't really follow him until that moment when he spoke to me and saved my marriage, he was still looking for me, seeking after me, pursuing, arranging things in my life, all my life. You know, and I hear a song. When I give my testimony when I'm in the nations, I sing. Because when you meet Jesus, it causes you to just yeah, roll up with worship. And it's that song that I love so much, you know. All my life you have been faithful. Yes. All my life you have been so, so good. Because he was after me. He did it for me. That's that's a beautiful Jesus. Yes. So good. So good. You know, I love getting to hear everybody's stories and testimonies because there's always this common thread. You can always see his character and his pursuit and his kindness and his goodness throughout everybody's story. And you can't make that up. Um, and so to me, it's so beautiful. And you know, there's been so many people who have said that they went to church looking for boys or looking for girls and encountered Jesus. Right. <laughs> I think yeah. um, I think that's what they call relationship evangelism. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I just love how he, you know, he'll use, he'll yeah. draw you, and he'll take you exactly as you are. You know, when when I was growing up in the Baptist church, and of course now I'm a wild charismatic like you, right? You know, <laughs> and I wouldn't trade it for anything because once you meet the Holy Spirit, there's no going back. You are ruined. For the yeah. ordinary, right? You are you are ruined for the ordinary. But and I, I but um yeah. you know in the Baptist church almost every Sunday they would give an altar call and mm -hmm. they would sing that that old song, you know, just as I am, mm -hmm. I come, you know, just as you are. And so, and it's really true. It's really true. He takes you as you are, where you're at, because he because he loves you already and he knows what he's going to do in your life to transform you. And he already knows the end from the beginning and he knows who you are after your transformation. And he is, he is excited and, and working to bring you into that wherever you are in your journey now. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. And I just love that. Um, he oftentimes will choose the least, the weak, the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And I just, I just want to say what's coming up on my heart is if you feel like, you know, like Gideon, I'm the least in my house. Why would you pick me? Um, you're just the kind of person he loves to pick. 
and um, the kind of people that the world loves to write off. Mm -hmm. And uh, he loves that, not because, um, not because it's great in his eyes, but because there's an open door for him to show his greatness mm -hmm. uh, in your life. And, you know, a lot of people think, is there anything that the grace of God can't cover in my life? But the Apostle Paul gives us this, this hope. He says, where sin abounded, grace much more abounds. Yeah. And right. so the grace of God is abundant. That's why I always start this show. I hope you are enjoying <laughs> the free flowing, abundant grace of God. It's not a joke. It's not a, not a cleverly written intro that I wrote. It's literally the waterfall of grace <laughs> that Kim and I were sitting under before this started. Yeah. And so when we encounter his presence and his, his grace and his mercy, it transforms and it goes beyond far mortal things. You know, my walk, I would have never thought that I would be doing what I was doing. I know, Kim, in your walk, would you ever think that you would do oh. what you do? You know, no, no, I am amazed every day and I, and I get overwhelmed. I, I feel it right now. I just, sometimes I just get overwhelmed with, um, with the, the mystery of it all and <clears throat> knowing where I really came from, <clears throat> knowing, knowing where I was really headed, mm -hmm. you know. And knowing that uh, my life really could have ended in tragedy. And now he picked me up and he turned me around with a song. I keep thinking of songs right now. I don't know why. I never, <laughs> do. I never usually do. But he picked me up. He turned me around, you know, and he placed my feet on solid ground, you know. And he really, <laughs> did, really did do that in my life. And I am aware every day. Yeah that this is his doing. I, when I step into the nations, I am completely amazed. And I, I, I just say, Jesus, whatever, whatever you sent me here to do. Cause I know that, that as you did it in my life, all of these people who have come, it doesn't matter what they came for. You have something that you brought them here for. Yeah. It's so good. You know, I, I absolutely love that. Um, it was so funny as you were, you were singing, you were, that second song was coming up on your heart. I was hearing it too. And I started laughing because I was hearing it too. And um, I love that so much, but it's true. He, he picks us up. He turns us around, right? And he, he puts mm -hmm. our feet on solid ground. Yeah. And that solid ground is him. And right now, the world is shaking, Kim. It's shaking. You know, we're recording this um, on October 4th. And just this week, we've seen um, Israel um, attack um, certain places. And we've seen uh, the United States now getting involved and talking about, you know, Israeli attacks in Iran. Uh, That's right. The world is shaking. You know, Jesus himself says when you when you see these things, lift up your head, your redemption is drawing near. And the truth is, is that he is coming quickly. He is coming. And a lot of times Israel's our, our prophetic clock, you know, and um, I'm just sitting here watching and waiting and saying, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come. The spirit and the bride say, come. But until that moment, Kim, we have work to do. <laughs> we do. We do. The yeah. night is far spent. The day is at hand, you know, and we need to be about the father's business right now. Yes, absolutely. And so if you hear the voice of God calling you, do not harden your heart. If you feel Jesus wooing you, just like Kim was talking about pursuing mm -hmm. you, the day is coming yeah. very quickly. Do not harden your hearts, but receive him. Say yes to him and uh, receive salvation today. 
because not one of us has promised another moment on this earth, not Kim, not me, not anyone. Even if we're serving God, you know, Jesus promises us with long life, he will satisfy us and show us his salvation, his Yeshua. But we know that in a moment we can all be snatched away. And so, you know, he's, he's so good. He's so faithful. He's pursuing us. And right now his presence is just, for those listening, his presence is just invading your spaces now. You know, either, there's no mistake that you were drawn to revealing Jesus. Mm-hmm. There's no mistake right now. And I just want to say this to you. If you think that you have to give up fun, if you think that you have to give up an enjoyable life, there is no life more enjoyable than living in the presence of God, than living with a God who loves you, who knows you, who who wows you every day, just like Kim was saying. You know, we stand in awe of you mm. every single day, Lord. It's the only way to live the Christian life is to stand in awe of you. And so you don't need to give up fun. You don't need to give up uh, the things that um, you enjoy unless they're really things that are really detrimental to you that are going to do you harm. He wants the best for you. Oh, because he loves you. He loves you so. Yeah. He can really recreate your life. The life that you are living right now when you find that it is empty and you find that all the material possessions only make you, make you joyful for a moment. They only satisfy you for a very little time. Some of you have been running around looking for love in all the wrong places. You have dabbled in things that you thought maybe would satisfy that, that desire that you have to feel whole, to feel loved to feel full and you have tried to fulfill every appetite apart from Christ but I just want to know Jesus died to give you the abundant life to make you full to complete your joy to uh, to complete his love in you that gets out all fear these are the things that Jesus does. And he, he doesn't, he makes you brand new, but you don't become a different person. You become the person he actually created you to be. He, you become fully human, fully who he intended you to be. And you discover things about yourself and you discover things that you can do with Christ and through his strength that you never would have imagined you wish that you could have dreamed of. It is more fulfilling. Listen, I lived that life. My husband lived that life. He was an alcoholic and a drug addict. We lived the life of addicts. We sought fulfillment and everything outside of Christ. But it wasn't until we came to Jesus and we allowed him to take all that we are, the good, the bad, the ugly, that we became who really meant and we became what you call happy. We we are joyful no matter what we're living through. And we have through some hard, hard things. And I just have to tell you, I I don't know how people do it without Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I think, Christina, I think you're supposed to lead them to Jesus right now. I I think they're ready to pray. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it, Ken. Let's do it together. Okay. Holy Spirit, I thank you for just wrapping your arms and your presence around them right now, wherever they are. If you're in a car, pull over. Don't just close your eyes. Pull over. (laughs) Father, we thank you for these under the sound of our voice, God. Father, we thank you that you've drawn them here to wrap your arms around them, to fill their hearts with your presence, Jesus. 
I want you to say this after me now. God, I come to you and I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. I thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me and you rose again without them. I now put my faith and my trust in you, Jesus, as my savior. I ask you to take my life mm -hmm. and I ask to make it into something beautiful i ask you to take every broken place and i ask you to come in and i ask you to recreate it in your glory i ask you to heal my heart heal my soul heal my body heal my mind every part of me yes. i ask you now to fill me with the presence of the holy spirit that i may walk out this life and i may glorify you jesus I thank you that I've now become a child of God and the spirit of God will cry out within my heart, Abba, Father, you are mine now. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God, fully loved, fully forgiven, fully justified in your eyes. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I just want to encourage you out there. There's so many good ministries. I know Kim has one. Um, I have one. You can keep hearing more about our beautiful Savior, Jesus. But I want you to listen to ministries that exalt Jesus and Jesus only. New mm -hmm. Covenant ministries that talk about the grace of God, the mercy of God, the forgiveness, what you now have in Christ, what he's done for you. People who will keep pointing your eyes to Jesus because you will be transformed in the beholding of Jesus. There is a link on our website where you can get a copy of our New Believer workbook. I want to encourage you to find that, to get that. It's foundational gospel truths to start you out on the right journey. Welcome to the kingdom. You are loved. <laughs> Beautiful. And you now have a family family yeah. who loves you kim is there anything burning on your heart you want to say directly to them you know i um in the last several days i have been um heavy in my heart for those who are are feeling pressure stress uh going through crisis you know and that may be you right now and and maybe that's why you came to listen today to revealing Jesus. Maybe, maybe you are sensing uh, all the shifting and the shaking and the exposure that's happening right now all over the world. Um, there are things right now that, that even in my own life, in my own family, you know, going through all kinds of hardships and battles and sicknesses and in the lives of the people that I love. And, um, and, looking for solutions and looking for answers. But I have been hearing God say this lately, and I just want to pass this on to you. Um, in Matthew 6, 34, it says, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. And I, I keep hearing him saying, this is a moment in time to take it one day at a time and to trust him for everything and only face the decisions you need to make in that day and let him care for the future and for the outcome. Because listen, Jesus knows the end from the beginning and what we will face. And he's already facing it for you. And he's in the present with you. And he has spoken to us about how to handle these kinds of times, these times of violence and crisis and shaking all over the world. He says, don't worry about tomorrow because your worry will add nothing to the circumstance, but its cost to you is terribly high. It costs you in your health, your emotional life, your relationships, your decision-making becomes, your capacity shrinks and it dulls your ability to hear the Lord. So just focus on him today and focus on what needs to be done today and let him carry the worry about tomorrow. And I promise you that he is carrying that for you. And I just, I just really want to pray this prayer for you. Would you just... Yeah, just 
open up your heart right now. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, we ask you to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, would you send mm -hmm. forth your peace yes, by Lord. your spirit yes, into Lord. the hearts of those who are troubled and facing crisis, illness, battles, hardship of every kind. Cover yes, them in your love and empower them to trust you. Because, God, we can't even trust you unless you help us trust you. So, so empower us. Empower them to trust you with the future. Feed them on the bread of life, which is Jesus. Help them to fix their eyes on Jesus. And think about whatever is of good report, because there's so much good to report in the midst of it all. You are moving on the earth. Many are coming to salvation all over the world. You are working all things together for the good of those who love you. That's your promise. And the victory is already won. So we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. I release over you right now the Prince of Peace with his peace. In Jesus' unmatched name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Kim. You were tracking right on my heart. I was about to ask you to pray. So good. So good. Well, this has been so much fun. I just love having you. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you, sweetie. I love you. It's been mm -hmm. great. Good. Well, I hope and I pray that today's episode has blessed you. I will have links from so many things that we've talked about into Kim's ministry and her new book, Finding Our Muchness into the New Believer Workbook. And if you gave your life to Jesus today, I want you to write to us and I want you to tell us because we want to celebrate with you. We want to welcome you to the kingdom. We want to encourage you. And uh, I'm, I'm just so, so thankful. So thankful. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless. Beloved, let me introduce you to my King. He is altogether lovely. No matter which way you turn him, he is perfection personified. He is velvet and steel. He is meekness and majesty. He is glory and humility. He is kindness and strength. He is altogether lovely. And he is my King and he can be yours as well. All day long, he holds his hand that you might take, that you might turn one step, one grasp, one yes, one breath away from the arms of your loving Savior. Beloved, if you hear him, do not harden your heart. The Bible declares that not one of us is guaranteed another moment upon this earth. So pray this prayer with me today and run into the arms of the one who loves you, who knows you best. Father, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sin, for all of the places that I have fallen short, God, of your glorious standard. I ask you now to send your Son into my heart to be the forgiveness of my sin, to be my redemption, to be my righteousness, to be my holiness, to be my sanctification. I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me, to fill me with your Spirit, your power, your glory, that I might bring glory to your name, Father. I thank you that I receive all of this by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. I thank you that I am now a child of God, fully forgiven, fully righteous, fully holy in your eyes. And I ask you to help me walk out this life in a way that pleases and honors you, Father. I thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. I thank you for your love, for your kindness, for your great joy in saving me. And I thank you, Father, and I thank you, Holy Spirit. And I pray all of these things in your beautiful Son's name. Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to congratulate you. You are now a child of God and all things are now yours. Keep listening to Revealing Jesus. Find a good Bible translation that makes sense to you. 
and keep hearing about our beautiful Savior Jesus. Please let us know. We want to continue to pray for you, and we want to send you a free PDF copy of our New Believer Workbook. Just go to christinaperrera.org slash welcome hyphen home. Enter your email address and we will be happy to send this free gift and continue to pray for your journey. God bless. I sincerely hope and pray today's episode has blessed you. Now it's your turn to continue the conversation. We are all evangelists of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Like this episode, rate it, share it with a friend. If it's impacted your life, let them know that you want it to do the same in theirs. Help spread the word of the good news of Jesus. Subscribe to the mailing list and get episodes, articles, downloads, and more sent right to you. Link in show notes or just text JESUS to 1-833-815-7778. Again, that's JESUS, 1-833-815-7778. We would love to connect with you on social media. You can find us at Christina Prayer Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next week, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus. God bless.